You know, it's time to take a look at the Strymon Night Sky. I'll take that out of infinite repeat there. Now, those of you who know my fondness of uh, large reverberant spaces will probably know about Strymon. Strymon are kind of the, the granddaddy of these kind of massive modulated reverbs, them along with uh, Eventide. But Strymon sort of came in on the scene and created with the blue sky, they sort of, they, they kind of almost coined the shimmer uh, type of effect. And this Strymon Night Sky is called a Time Warped Reverberator and it's a dedicated pedal which uh, incidentally is almost the same colour as the uh, cobalt here I've got which I'm using to feed it which is a really simple, just using a really simple patch to give you some sort of idea of what this pedal is doing. Uh, the Strymon Night Sky is a stereo in stereo out reverberator, time warped reverberator as they say and it's got a bunch of controls for um, making your own reverb, uh, reverb. It's got presets, it's got morphing. In fact, I was using the morphing. If I just play, if I play a note. You can use the morph to morph between certain parameters. In this case, I was going from minus eight to I think the fourth. It's also got sequencing of presets. It's got a whole bunch of stuff. Stereo in, stereo out, expression, MIDI in and out, and USB for, uh, I think, librarian and uh, also for firmware updates. Now, Strymon stuff isn't the most affordable. It's the kind of premium reverb stuff, and this is a nice chunky desktop pedal um, and external power supply. You're not going to be powering this off batteries. But really, I, I mean, I would put it on the floor, um, but it's so nice to get your hands on all of those things. Uh, you can obviously control a lot of things of this via MIDI, so if you want to hook it up with uh, MIDI controllers, foot controllers, you've got access to all of that stuff as well. So this is an algorithmic reverb. It's got three distinct algorithms at its heart. This is all running on a Shark DSP, which runs at something like 1500 megaflops, which is fast. I don't know exactly how fast, but fast enough, I suppose. And then we've got these three distinct sections. This is, like I say, the reverb section with the three different textures. We've got the size and the pitch, and this, this button here delineates what the, uh, this, knob does, so whether it's a smooth pitch transition, whether it's uh, chromatic or whether it runs to a specific scale, more on that later. We've then got this kind of shimmer and glimmer engine and the shimmer is that kind of uh, gives you that the cascading and pitch affected reverbs which work on the sort of the feedback loop and there's also a little bit of uh, chorus and modulation in there and the shimmer can work on the input or the regeneration. There's also a glimmer engine which kind of adds additional harmonics. Uh, there's indeed also a drive circuit which can be pre-reverb and post-reverb which adds quite a lot of saturation. Then we've got the high and low cut. Uh, in regen mode this just kind of basically stops 
low end going into the reverb to thin it out and same with the high end. In low pass mode this becomes a low pass filter with resonance. You attach, to, you get to the resonance by pressing shift and using the reverb button. There's quite a lot of shift functions here and the reverb uh, knob is what kind of uh, affects the density or the, the, the level of that. Certainly in the, uh, the glimmer you've got that and then the drive amount here and there's various other points as well. Um, weirdly, the low pass filter works opposite. It doesn't start open and go close, it starts open and goes close, which is a bit odd. Then we've got modulation, which can modulate the reverb, the pitch and the filter, or the filter. Um, 16 presets and uh, the foot switches work in various different ways, we'll more on that later. Then we've got a reverb wet and a dry level. So let's just listen to those algorithms at the core. Uh, this one is is sparse and it's a sort of, they call it a granular, uh, well it's a granular algorithm so the grain size is very small and that's sort of the feedback. So it's like an echo but it's a lot more complex than that. And we can add the shimmer to this as well. So I'm currently in the middle. And that's on the input, this is on the regeneration. So we get that cascading. If it's just on the input, it's just a step. Some really interesting... Let's take those. Oops, step, just switch sparse there. So let's now go to bring in the glimmer. And take the level of the glimmer engine up. Take that down. So you can hear it affects kind of the harmonics of what's going on in the glimmer engine. Uh, I've take that down. Then we've also got drive. Pre and post. And we get a nice bit of extra saturation. <laughs> right. Next up is the density engine. And this is more like a plate. This is perhaps the most realistic one. Let's take the glimmer out and the drive out. This is kind of actually acceptable, acceptable as a, just a regular reverb, but we bring these levels right up and then suddenly we're into that. Let's go, let's get some low notes in here. And you hear that starts to bring the low end cut off and then we can really Let's try that in low pass mode and bring some resonance up. So that gives you a really kind of epic length. I mean, it just goes on and on and on forever. In fact, this, re <laughs> this review is going to be <laughs> it's going to be really long because I'm going to have to wait for all of the tails to go. No, perhaps I won't. Right. Um, again, now adding. Let's take the uh, the low pass off this. That's nice. And then bring the shimmer in. the input. Bring the glimmer in. Oops. It's that button for glimmer at level, sorry. So 
So you can hear that kind of affects the tonality of the reverb quite a lot. Let's try a bit of pre-drive. Let's affect the level of that. Yeah, we're getting into Zimmer, aren't we? Oh, sort of majestic, orchestral, brassy. Oh, that's nice. Uh, let's try post. Take that full up. I mean, it's hard not to just stand there and go, isn't that lovely? And that's the thing that's really interesting about this, uh, in This it's almost like an instrument. It's like a synth in many ways, you know, because it's got filters. I mean, if we now take this sound and start modulating the, uh, the filter, hold that for a while. So now we've got that infinite hold. Oh, I need probably a bit more. Yeah, there we go. So now I can play sounds. Gosh, it's getting a bit epic already. I can play sounds on top of this. button here I'm, I'm I'm kind of buffering whatever's in the reverb but but I, then I'm able to add additional reverb on top of that instant soundtrack work this I mean like I say it's gonna be quite hard to get through all the features of this because everything it just sounds so lovely let's take the infinite off oh yeah we've got another algorithm to look at and you can hear that's with the not maximum length but we'll take that down so yes that uh, third algorithm is called diffuse and this is more they call this more of a sort of uh, otherworldly uh, reverb so let's take a listen Start off really short, actually. One thing I didn't mention on all algorithms, pressing and holding the button and adjusting the reverb, changes the pre-delay time. Now this uh, sh sort of shift functionality is all well and good, but it would be really nice to have had a dedicated knob or one that wasn't perhaps so uh, dramatic if you miss if you misstepped or misturned it because obviously if you misturn this you're going to be affecting the actual reverb level and certainly when you're in performing it might be something that you know you could easily miss anyway again this affects the steps of the smooth pitch slash size because this is a modulatable feature. Let's bring in the glimmer. Again, you can hear it on the high setting. That's interesting. Let's. Oh, it's 
quite an interesting sound. Let's bring the pre-delay back. And let's try some shimmer. Take that. So what I might do now is change this morph setting. So I like that one. Let's have that one. So to change the morph setting, you press two and seven together. Then you adjust the knob you want, then press again. So now let's go back. To can hear just about that there's those two sets. This is stored per preset, which is kind of cool. So you've got two kind of, by pressing and holding. We can affect the speed of this as well. And I believe we do that by changing the So we can affect the speed of those transitions by, again, the shift and the reverb. So the morph is actually quite handy for maybe pulling a couple of sounds out of the same preset. So this one, let's try a bit of drive on it. Try something low. come to what happens if we modulate the the filter now the reverb up. <laughs> God, that's huge, isn't it? It sounds like a synth. I mean, it really does. And uh, obviously, I'm just putting... And this is... That's what I'm putting in. So essentially any kind of crappy sound into this, as long as it's got some frequency range, is going to sound epic. Rear connections, 9 volt on DC connector, large MIDI in and out, mini USB, expression pedal input, left and right out on stereo, plus a switch to switch from instrument level, say guitars, and line level. Another neat feature is using the expression pedal. I've just got this continuous controller. It's a Roland Sustain that has in it a continuous mode. I've plugged it into the back of the unit here. And now I can basically uh, set it up so. So I press and hold one and eight. I depress my pedal and up and it basically shows that it's getting the two extremes. Now what I can do is I can set, uh, this is an up sound, so I'm going to set the settings to here for this. I could adjust any of these knobs. Then I press the pedal down and go, right, I want that to be here and I want that to be here. So now I go back to my preset. So now I've got 
the ability to do this. If I turn the reverb up a bit. So what's actually happening is I'm adjusting in real time the filter and the interval via the foot pedal and I can store that in each patch. So you can actually have the pedal interact with these patches in a very creative way, which is great for live stuff as well. Uh, there's also another mode where you can get, they call it a, a, a multi-switch, which I don't know whether that's a, a, a a night sky, a Strymon thing, but you can use it for other functions such as uh, cycling through patches and changing. So you can get a lot of foot control going on just with some extra hardware. So like I say, uh, only real criticism is so far is the fact that we have to use this knob for these shift functions. And they are a little bit tricky to remember from time to time. Um, but I'm liking the essential, the sort of basic sound of this unit. When I first heard it, I was thinking, oh, it's, yeah, it's not that impressive. But actually, the more you put into it and the more you play with the tonality of the sounds that go into it and the fact that you're able to really quickly just drop this infinite in and out and that's great for building up these textures. I mean, with this and a synth, you know, you could, you could jam an ambient gig. You know, this and perhaps even just a mono synth you could jam an ambient gig, which is kind of saying quite a lot. But yes, you are paying a bit of a premium for this, but these sort of, these performance features definitely kind of add a new dimension to how you might use this. I mean, obviously I'm using this uh, primarily, well, only on a synth because, you know, I'm a synth reviewer, we review other stuff, but I'm sure there are plenty of videos out there of people putting guitars in there and whatnot, but uh, this is gonna focus primarily on the synth. So let's take a look at some of those other functions. Okay, let's get into sequence mode, so. We'll just press this, uh, this is the sound I have. Now, to get in sequence mode, I press and hold this guy. Uh, let's not have, let's just go for a four step. We've got up to eight steps. Now, uh, sorry, four steps, so I'm gonna press and hold this. Uh, they suggest... <laughs> should have something in the buff something in the buffer so now I'm gonna go another step so now I think I should be able to play this tap tempo. So you hear what's going on there. So now I can play. Not sure entirely how useful this is. Let's take that now. So there is a sequence mode, but the, the interesting thing about this, if we come out of sequence mode and we just go back to our reverb, I'm just going to grab, I've got a MIDI keyboard here, which I've plugged into the MIDI input of the uh, uh, Strymon. So now I can actually... ..play... Trigger those notes values, which is essentially this this knob here from a MIDI keyboard. Again, I can't think immediately think of something really particularly enabling to do with that, but it does enable. It's kind of like. It's almost like a kind of sampler, isn't it? It's got that duh, duh. But I'm sure someone else could think of a much better way to utilise it than I'm currently able to. I suppose if we put 
On the regen, we maybe put the... Uh kind of like uh, something kind of cool but I haven't quite figured out what to use it for but it's there so again you know coming back to the MIDI implementation there's a huge long list of all the parameters that you can access via controls so you know you could hook this up into a live setup and have something via your MIDI controller or automation via your DAW to do very specific features and automate those that's actually quite cool we can also uh, set a glide between these so if I just Press go. Press the shape. Which again is a, a feature. I'm not sure how useful that is. So another thing to test is the envelope follower uh, because we can switch this into envelope mode. <laughs> Let's uh, take the pre... So this is just the wet signal we're listening to. Let's bring the resonance up. Bring the resonance down. Let's get that right up there. That's kind of cool. It's like an envelope follower. Which again makes it very synthy. I mean, obviously, if you're putting a synth in it in the first place, it's of less interest, but you could use this for uh, obviously guitars and other stuff which would create that secondary function that's actually quite useful. I mean, okay, it's not the best sounding filter in the world, but. What's that sound? Sound like I'm. Interesting. I mean, again, limited use on other things apart from the filter. But all of these features add up to something that is way more than just this kind of reverb pedal. Um, yes, the, the Strymon stuff does have this kind of premium to it. And that's the one thing that, you know, you could say, well, I might be able to get a Valhalla Shimmer or something in plug-in form. And yeah, you could, but you wouldn't have this dedicated piece of hardware that allows this performance mode. It's very quick to get. And these sounds are really quite pleasing. I mean, I, I'll play some more examples on the playout because I think, you know, once you start jamming with it, that's when it really comes to life. You can find yourself just lost in this little lovely soundscape, and that's really appealing. It's just 429 quid, uh, other currencies will scroll below. Just feels a little bit rich, um, but Strymon stuff is pricey. I mean, we know that, so I guess it's no surprise. Anyway, if you want to see any extra content, I might do some more examples on Patreon. Head over to patreon.com forward slash sonic state. Uh, that's it. See you next time. Thanks for watching.